All right, well, I got Mac OS 9 up and running on my uh, MacBook Pro with Catalina. And I think this is just really fun, interesting, and a cool project to be able to look at really the last version of Macintosh Classic or the, the Mac OS Classic version. Uh, and this was before Steve Jobs basically switched everything up to a Unix-based operating system that we all now know and love, which is the OS uh, X, which has now been relabeled uh, Mac OS. Um, the cool thing with OS 9, it has uh, just a really cool feel to it, and it runs on anything. So hardware-wise, uh, you can run it on the older Mac G3, G4, G5s. Well, not the newer G4 and G5s, but I'll get to that uh, in a different video. But it's got just some, some cool vision uh, into what would then become tools like Spotlight within the operating system. Um, Finder has sort of a, a similar feel. A lot of the hotkeys still work. Uh, th there's just a really a lot of cool things that you could do in it. But this video isn't just about OS 9. It's about how to actually get it up and running so that you can go and experience it for yourself. All right, so I think a little bit of it might be, you know, why would you even want to embark down this path, right? And I think one of the big ones is there's a lot of older software out there, you know, 20 year old software that was just completely abandoned. Uh, in fact, um, abandoned to the sense of those companies no longer exist and no longer exist from, you know, 25 plus years ago. Remember, this is a you know, the sort of the right around 99, 2000 uh, software um, here. So there are companies that are dead and gone. Uh, and that means that there are sites out there that still have that software available for download that only works within OS 9. Uh, now, I'm not going to point you directly at those sites, but let's just say it's real easy to go out there and search for OS 9 software and you'll find it. Because uh, there is sort of an interesting gray area there when it comes to abandonware. Since the companies don't exist, nobody really owns the rights to the software, and the software isn't in production anymore. There's nobody you could even pay to get the software. So, yeah, keep it to the software that you know for sure is no longer being built for newer Macs. Um, it's also, it's really fun to play around with an older operating system like this. Uh, there's, there's just a lot of nostalgia here. Uh, these are the, this is the operating system, and actually I think this was a little bit later than what I used. I used a lot of OS 8 back when I was in school. And uh, it's just sort of fun to play with the older operating system that was very comfortable. And, uh, and you just recognize a lot of the different functionality uh, from, yeah, really, when I was in uh, middle school, high school. And I don't want to date myself too much here. Um, additionally, I actually wanted to, to get this up and running on my computer so that I could get an idea of what I'm in for, because I actually just bought a iMac G3, as well as, um, uh, what do they call them, the, the PowerBook G3 as well. And then I also have a broken Mac Pro, the G5 version uh, coming in. And I'm gonna play around with all these. The, the G5 is broken, so I may end up just putting a different computer within it or inside it. Uh, if I can get it up and running though, I'm gonna do a Linux build on that one, because sadly, uh, running OS 10.45 is sort of useless these days. but I'll get into that one in a different video, of course. <laughs> All right, so let's get down to the how you actually can get in and use uh, OS 9. And that is where we get into the emulation side of things, the emulation software. Ooh, and actually I wanted to come back and make one quick note here. All of the software that you're seeing here up on the screen was sort of put in here for uh, demo purposes, just to show off a little bit while I was uh, creating this introduction talk track. Um, but definitely uh, the, the old version of the Oregon Trail, uh, well worth it. And this isn't even the original version of the Oregon Trail, uh, because I remember there was a, a green screen version. So the even older Apple Max, uh, I think the SE edition. So I think it's just sort of fun. This is a great version. As you know, even the newer versions that came out in Windows 95, 98, they just weren't the same. They, they were missing something. So um, I just thought it would be fun to see if I could die of you know, dysentery or cholera. And strangely enough, I was doing quite well, even though I wasn't fully paying attention and just trying to rush the game. <laughs> but hey, you know what? Sometimes uh, 
sometimes that game is very forgiving and other times you die in the first couple months because a snowstorm or something along those lines. Either way, uh, definitely a classic, definitely worth uh, going in and checking out. And I think that at some point I want to put together a compilation of all the different old games, once again, Abandonware, that were, um, that were just, they, they were the originals, right? I feel like every single game nowadays is just version 3, version 6, version 12 of something that we had and was actually, even though simpler, right, simpler from a graphical standpoint as well as a game mechanic standpoint, it was better. So um, one of these days I'll get to, to getting nostalgic about the games that were better when they were, you know, the originals. So long story short, a lot of cool software that you can actually go and get out there for OS 9. But uh, yeah, yeah, let's, let's get into the the sort of the mechanics of getting this up and running for yourself, and then I can come back and do sort of a walkthrough of the, the user interface. All right, so let's talk about what kind of software you're gonna need to get up and running uh, with OS 9 on really um, your, your Mac or Intel-based uh, Windows PC. So here's the thing, older G3, G4, and I think even the G5 has the ability to run sort of a VM with OS 9 in it. So those machines right out of the box will be able to run OS 9. Now Intel-based Macs and, and really anything uh, require uh, virtualization software essentially. And virtualization software that has a couple different pieces to it. Now I'm not sure exactly what all these different pieces are doing underneath the covers, but I know what a few of them do. There's four key things that you need. First up, you're going to need something called Sheep Shaver. All right, and Sheep Shaver um, is actually a open source Power Mac emulator. Now, the installation instructions are a little bit confusing, yada, 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 but what you're going to be looking for is the pre-built binary, right, for any one of your operating systems. You can actually go straight to the GitHub repository, and I went down that path for a little bit. Let's just say that if you're getting into running make commands, um, you are much more proficient at Linux and, uh, and Unix as well. Easy mode head over to these forums here and grab a pre-built version, right? You can see these right here at the top. Builds for Mac OS, boom, here we go. One of these here is gonna specifically reference Catalina, so high, high zero through Catalina. This is what you want, this is step one. Put this into a folder somewhere on your computer so that you now have access to the first step, which is Sheep Shaver. Now, that's where you start. The next one is you need something called the Sheep Shaver folders, right? Um, I'm not sure why it's a separate download, but here you go. Go ahead and down that Sheep Shaver folder as well. So you need the executable as well as the folder. So you now have two pieces of the puzzle, um, which is actually, this is everything that Sheep Shaver needs to, air quotes, run. This guide will actually help you through the process of the next two pieces that you're gonna need. One is gonna be the Mac OS install CD. Now, uh, they even give you little references here of where you might be able to find one of those. Long story short, um, there's a place, it's like Mac OS Garden, I think is what it is. Either way, search online for that, the Macintosh Garden. You're gonna find a lot of older software out there uh, for OS 9, as well as some installation CDs, because you're gonna need that one as well. So that's piece three of the four pieces that you need. The last one is gonna be a compatible ROM file. Now, you should be able to search online again for one of these, right? You're going to need, if you're running Mac OS 9, the New World ROM. Now, what this means, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, what this means is that uh, older PowerPC machines actually had a ROM file on the board next to the CPU that had certain API commands included within it. You could almost think of it as a lightweight operating system or a BIOS to a certain extent, and you're going to need those APIs in order to even emulate OS 9. So that's where you're going to have to go out and search the internet once again for the New World, that's the one that I'm using, um, New World uh, ROM. You can see a couple tips here within the documentation for immaculation.com on where to, to search on Google to find that. Once again, sort of that gray area, I'm not going to provide direct links to any of this, but you can go out there and find it here. So now you have the four pieces within one folder, okay? And a, and a few extra tips here as well, I'll try and jump into. So what I did was, of course, I've got um, the or operating system version here, the ROM that I was talking about, 
the actual sheep shaver executable, and then the uh, folder, I think, is one of these. I can't 100% remember where exactly I put that, but these are gonna be all the elements you need. Key codes, this is a file that I think came with the sheep shaver folder. Long story short, you're gonna actually run sheep shaver and then tell it to look for these key codes, as well as then you create a cool little folder where you can pass files back and forth between your host operating system and then this you know, uh, guest operating system, the OS9. Uh, once you've got everything set up, you're going to tell, of course, the operating system to boot. Let me put this on the screen here. And it's going to crash. It's not going to work. You actually have to jump into Sheep Saver Preferences and tell it where your different disks are. You have to actually create a disk um, for it to store onto your computer. If you're used to virtualization software, this is very similar to something that you've probably done before. Create a disk, give it some memory, uh, tell it where to boot from. Uh, tell it where that Unix root folder is. You can pass files back and forth. Tell it where the ROM file is. Uh, configuring audio and video. I actually found that doing it at a window with 60 hertz refresh rate rather than dynamic worked really well. And then of course, adjust your width and height. Do not try full screen. I've not been able to get it to work in, in full screen. And if you ever need to and you hit save and it's crashed or you can't get out of it, press control escape on your Mac. Um, I think Alt F4 equivalent on uh, Windows, or you may have to go into Task Manager. It's just basically like there's tell the, the, the software to quit, and then there's make it quit. Control Escape is make it quit. Um, you'll also see here for audio, uh, my configurations. And then of course, the last piece is sort of the configuration of um, the operating system itself. Tell it to ignore uh, memory access. Tell it to use the key codes folder file. Tell it that when you use the mouse wheel, so dragging up and down within your trackpad, for example, for me, one line at a time, page up, page down. And then for network access, you gotta tell it to use the interface slurp, right? Everything else you can leave blank. Who cares about modems or printers at this point? And then you'll go ahead and you'll save and quit. Once you've done that, you should be able to do the control escape, kill it, open it back up, uh, and then get into your operating system. What's really cool about OS 9 is that, um, it's just so simple, right? It's easy to use. You have all of your active applications up here in the right-hand corner. Uh, you have, I don't know if we can call this, is sort of the, the current, you know, in, in our Mac operating system today, we have all of our status symbols here across the top. This is basically the equivalent of a never-changing status of different applications down here at the bottom. Like, you know, you've got actually the old keychain here, so very similar to the current day keychain. You actually have, um, the ability to do a search really well too. Uh, and it is called Sherlock. So this is sort of like a preview into now our new, you know, sort of Siri slash magnifying glass that we have within the Mac operating system. But you can actually tell it to search across all sorts of different websites, um, different locations on the internet. None of this works anymore. People, uh, yeah. So basically you had all sorts of different options. You can even see here, this was back when Amazon uh, was only books, and apparently they actually had music and video back in 2000-ish, uh, back when Barnes & Noble was still a thing, rest in peace. I mean, they're still there, but you know what I mean. Uh, searching Apple, etc. cetera. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. Um, another thing here, you can actually see the folder, Unix, that actually contains all the files that I'm trying to pass back and forth between this virtual machine. Thing is though, if you wanna install any of these, you have to ha actually have to take your um, hard disk, essentially the VM disk here for your uh, operating system and make sure to drag those over. I just downloaded some to test them out. Um, I'm gonna actually delete most of these because I don't need them and I've got my G3 Mac coming and I'm gonna actually use the software on that one. Um, but let's just say that a few of them I found don't work few do work. Um, I've mostly just been playing around to see which ones do and do not work, um, just to see what's out there. But you drag them over here, and then you can see I've got a folder called downloaded apps that I dragged over those same uh, pieces of software. Um, one of them that you'll probably want to get just to, to play around is, is uh, Classilla, and it's basically an older version of Firefox that still con was converted to work in OS 9, and, and it's the most up-to-date browser that you can get. In fact, it works better than uh, when I was testing an older machine with Microsoft Vista. Um, so pre Windows 8, 7, I think it was Vista 7, 8, and then 10. Um, RIP to all of those. Uh, now, Classilla, it actually sort of works still for the internet. And 
I find this I find this funny that it actually has better support than Windows Vista still. Um, now you're going to get a lot of security alerts, and a lot of sites will actually look broken. But you know, for example, you can actually get out there and get to some different new sites. And a lot of websites have sort of a fallback mode to an older version. So I'm not saying that you're actually going to want to browse the web on this virtual machine. In fact, I would say that it's pretty much right out for browsing the web, but you can find websites that actually still work. I think the one that I actually found that was working was old.reddit.com. Yeah, uh, sort of falling back to the older version or mobile versions of sites will still function. And, and this is very telling, right? You, you, OS 9, you can't really browse the web with it. In fact, there's no real reason to be connected to the internet on one of these machines because they don't have security patches anymore. But just note that um, it's just fun. It's fun to go out there, try it out, see what works, see what doesn't work. Um, you'll notice that the uh, experience is definitely actually okay, but a little bit slower um, than you'd want for traditional web browsing. But I just thought this was a fun video to walk through how to get an operating system on your uh, Mac or Windows PC that was sort of a look back in time. and also has just a bunch of fun older abandonware titles that uh, you just can't get anywhere anymore. You, you can't actually go out and buy the, the software that will run on this older machine. Um, now, granted, I've, I saw that people were trying to, to you know, have uh, like Age of Empires 2 or something like that downloadable. Now, I do know that you could still go out and actually buy the new you know, high definition edition, you know, high def uh, edition for you know, your newer uh, Macs or, or on Steam. And I would just say is that stay away from software like that where people are like, uh, purposely abusing uh, you know, some loopholes to try and play games that you can still buy. Uh, so purchase them if there are still games out there. It's only like five bucks anyways, and it's a great classic game. But for some of these that you can no longer get, um, you know, like I said, it's a gray area. Um, I'm not too concerned about it. Um, and, and I think you know, it's just sort of fun to go and see the past. But that's about it. I'm going to go ahead now and uh, tell this thing to shut down, which I think is actually, is it underneath the file? Special? There we go. It's under special. Go ahead and shut this sucker down. <clears throat> Save my state. And that's pretty much it. Just a fun little project that you can do while you're quarantined at home. All right.